Inklings and octolings are curious things. They evolved from squids and octopodidae. Octopodes. Octopods? Octopuses? Oh well. However, they look like humans, sort of, now. That's strange, right? And it brings with it a whole host of lore and science questions. Why do they have arms and legs? And why do they have lips in front of their beaks? Questions like that. But of all of the questions you might ask about inkling and octoling anatomy, there is only one question we are here to answer today. The clickbaitiest of them all. Why do the inklings and octolings have breasts? <laughs> because let's stop real quick for just a second. Breasts are exclusively a human thing, cow udders and the like aside. Mammary glands and the secretion of dairy milk for one's young is 100% a mammalian thing. You know, mammal, mammary. It's where the word comes from. And inklings and octolings are evolved from cephalopods. They're mollusks. They don't really share anything with humans biologically besides both being in the clade of nephrosa, which applies to almost all animals anyway. Humans and the races in Splatoon's origins are as different from each other as they come. So again, why in the world would they have breasts, an exclusively human trait? Let's try and answer that question. To start with, we can establish that inklings aren't secretly squid-like mammals rather easily. You see, they don't have teats, the part of the animal where milk actually comes from. But how do we know this? A glitch in Splatoon 2's Hero Mode. If you die to water damage, respawn, and then take damage at the precise moment you complete a level, you see this. And yes, that's a dude. Don't worry. Additionally, if you consider the Splatoon manga canon, there's always this infamous scene featuring Goggles Coon. No nips to be seen. Males in many species still have this body part. They are just much smaller usually, but they still have them. And they are somewhat essential for having functioning milk delivering breasts on the female. So then, if they aren't fully functioning breasts, why do they have them? The easy answer, of course, is the one loads of people have already tippity typed in the comment section like the silly dillies they are. And that reason would be that it's aesthetic. Just because the designers made them that way. Ooh, I'm so smart. Look at me tippity tapping into comments. But no, since inklings aren't born looking humanoid, only gaining that ability at 14 years of age, and since they revered humans as gods, given that they ascribe holy meaning to the ancient transmissions that decide Splatfest themes, their human form is likely an assumed form based on that of their gods. Breasts on the female and all. However, this is a weak explanation at best, since the Octarian's human cultural influence stops at DJ Octavio's design having nods to samurai, and their technology is far less derivative from that of humans when compared to that of the Inklings, meaning that they likely do not have this same cultural association. So clearly, the humanoid forms of the Inklings and Octolings aren't an assumed form, but actually part of their biology. Which means the breasts must come from somewhere, but where? After much research, we found two potential explanations. One rooted in actual cephalopod biology, and the other rooted in the lore of Splatoon itself. The scientific explanation has less supporting evidence and will take less time to explain, and in my opinion, it's the least interesting of the two, so we'll go over that one first. You see, while you'd think that real-life squids and octopuses don't have any bit of anatomy that could be analogized to human breasts, well, they don't. But they have something close. Some female cephalopods, including many squids and octopods, have organs called the nidimental glands, paired glandular structures found in the mental cavity that may be joined by additional accessory nidimental glands. These glands are involved in the creation of egg cases as well as the gelatinous component of cephalopod eggs. These are analogous to breasts in that, again, they're paired, they take the form of two adjacent glands like mammary glands, they even partially encapsulate the ink sac. And we know from Sunken Scroll 14 in Splatoon 2 that the ink sac in Inklings is found at least partially in the upper chest cavity. However, while both the nidimental glands and breasts are to an extent involved in reproduction and child rearing, they serve vastly different purposes. And this all hinges on the assumption that inklings and octolings still lay eggs, which is impossible because they have belly buttons. Darn Marina, ruining everything. Belly buttons means placental birth, not eggs. They give live birth. They're just like lemon sharks, so there's that. There are a number of fish that give life birth, 
just like how there are some mammals that still lay eggs. It's weird. But there is still another explanation. Let's look at Sunken Scroll 5 from the first game, which depicts some Octarian propaganda, a dossier of sorts on Inklings. The text corresponding to this scroll mentions a high-pressure, high-capacity ink sack, and corroborating statements made in-game about Inkling and Octoling biology claims, BONES NONE. A creature that has no bones, but is still a bipedal humanoid, and with a high-pressure ink sack contained at least partially in the upper chest cavity... That's really strange. It's barring the convenient explanation of their shapeshifters, and are literally made of ink. Which, let's be real, the games are full of contradictory evidence, both supporting and debunking this. I think it's safe to say that while Inklings and Octolings lack bones, per se, what they do have is a skeleton made of cartilage. In all likelihood, hardened cartilage. Huh. So they're even more like sharks, then. This allows them to, despite being boneless, still have highly developed musculature. As well as, you know, actually stand up and walk around at all. This is even corroborated by Inklings and Octolings having visible shoulder blades, partially visible on the Squid Sisters and off the hook. As well as Inklings having knuckles that are visibly exaggerated even by human standards. But what does that have to do with breasts? I hear you ask. Well, think about it. We have two sunken scrolls depicting an ink sac partially or fully inside the upper chest cavities, depending on how much you write up to art style. An ink sac that is referred to as high capacity and high pressure. What does that suggest to you? Because it sounds to me like those breasts aren't made of fat. They're made of pure muscle. Evolved the way they are to allow both for increased pressure and ink capacity inside their protrusions. But then comes the all-important question that always makes these breast videos interesting. Why only the females? Surprisingly, the lore offers some reasoning to this as well, although it's somewhat anecdotal. Consider the characters most associated with the Turf War are all women, those being the Squid Sisters and Off the Hook. They host Inkopolis News, responsible for informing Inklings of the current maps and modes in rotation, as well as host Splatfest, a ceremonial position, yes, but one that involves them representing and leading their respective sides. Consider that the canon designs for the playable characters in the game's single-player modes, Agent 3 in Splatoon, Agent 4 in Splatoon 2, and Agent 8 in the Octo expansion, are also all female. Consider that Agents 3, 4, and 8, as well as the Squid Sisters as Agents 1 and 2, and Off the Hook as MC Princesses and DJ Hyperfresh, are all either agents of or involved in aiding the new Squidbeak Splatoon. The militia, led by Captain Cuttlefish against the Octarians in both games. If that isn't enough for you, the naming for the Octolings themselves gives it away. How, you may ask? Well, that involves looking at the Japanese version of the game. In the Japanese version of Splatoon and Splatoon 2, Octolings are referred to as Tako Zonisu, a combination of Tako, or octopus, and Amazonisu, or Amazons, that is, strong, athletic women in power, specifically the women warriors that did the leading in war for the Amazonic tribes. Meanwhile, in the Octo expansion, Agent 8 and the playable Octolings are consistently referred to as just Tako. The species name, then, is just Tako, or Octopus, and Takonezu is a title given to the strong, athletic warrior women you face in the single-player modes. If you haven't pieced it together yet, what all of this suggests is that while males were allowed to participate in the Turf War, and we see examples of both male Inkling and Octolings serving in the Great Turf War in Sunken Scrolls 15 and 16 from the first game, it is Inkling and Octoling women who are far more well-equipped for combat. It is the opposite of our world, where men are biologically built for more upper body strength and aggression, making them the warriors. But in the world of Splatoon, it's the other way around, hence the reference to the Amazons, and most in power being women. Again, the opposite in our case. It's a matter of evolution and adaptation. Male and female humans are different because... that's how we ended up. Same case here in Splatoon. In fact, when it comes to some real squid and octopuses, the females have more power when it comes to reproduction. While in most cases, male animals need only to persuade some smashing, or take it by force to get babies, for some squid and octopus, the male will actually get its dingling ripped off. But don't worry, it grows back. 
And even then, the females can hold on to it as long as they want, and choose when to have their eggs fertilized at their own discretion, giving the females all of the power. And just to drive the whole thing home using Splatoon evidence, here are some quotes from a 2015 Famitsu interview with the developers when it came to the design of the Inklings. Quote, the main emphasis was on the girl, to the extent that at first we thought whether or not it would be alright to not have a boy. When having a chance to design a new character, there was the fact that it's rare to have a girl lead in a Nintendo title, and also having a strong and active female may make it easier to become accepted overseas. The design was centered on the girl at first, and then the design of a boy was thought of in comparison. So. Even from a game design standpoint, the female inkling takes precedence, giving them the dominant power in their world, which in turn points to them having extra bits of muscle and or ink sac stuff around their ink parts in their chest. That extra muscle means they can eject the ink at a much higher pressure, making the females significantly better in combat. And thus, just like in our real world history, those who control and dominate the wars conquers the world. The one who brings home the bacon. So there you have it. The reason Inklings and Octolings have breasts in Splatoon. Just try not to think about it too hard the next time you just blindly vote for whatever side Marina is on during Splatfest. Come on. And until next time, never stop using your noggin. And here are two other awesome Splatoon videos, and a massive thanks to our Patreon supporters, making these videos possible. Thanks a million.